Hello everyone and thanks for clicking on this video. Uh, in this short video, uh, both myself and Ryan want to give you a bit of a taster of our upcoming Mead and Meaning session. Uh, this is going to be online. Um, is it, Ryan, is it Google Hangouts? Google Meet. Google Meet. It's going to be on Google Meet. They've changed the name. Same thing. Um, and so this is going to be on the 22nd of October at 7 p.m. UK time. Uh, if you've signed up on the website, you'll be sent uh, the link uh, to join us. Um, uh, it'll be a space for us to kind of chat, people to kind of chat, um, introduce yourselves, um, dive a bit deeper into this idea of, uh, of, of what, what really is the community is about, what we're going to be doing. Um, but also, also, it's going to be about a different subject each month. And so for the first session, uh, and Ryan's going to take it away in a minute, the first session is going to be looking at the symbolism of the vine. Um, I have here a copy of St. Cuthbert's Gospel. And so there's a kind of vine image on this ancient um, book. Obviously, this is a replica. Um, but there's obviously this image that Christ uses as well of referring himself to the vine. And so a lot of what we're doing, what we hope to be doing, is kind of going to be connecting all of that with um, our lives today. You know, the kind of the image, the the sense of what we're about is kind of uh, inhabiting a fuller view of reality. Um, themes of kind of re-enchantment that you'll be probably be familiar with online. And so we want to kind of look at what that actually means uh, for us today um, and just just really dive into all of that kind of rich, ancient um, uh, way of seeing. Um, and before I go any deeper, a few people have probably been wondering about the name Mead and Meaning. I have a bottle of, of mead here that I've brewed. Um, it's kind of a, I don't know, is it a bit of a bit of a niche thing? I don't know, maybe it is. Um, so we just, it's a bit of a tongue in cheek name, but myself and Ryan kind of noticed this uh, popularity of kind of Viking or Anglo-Saxony kind of imagery again, um, uh, whether that's kind of the TV show Vikings or whether that's just mead and mead tasting. A few years ago it was gin, but now it seems to be kind of mead maybe. And so this is just a bit of a fun thing. You're welcome to bring uh, a glass of mead and have a chat. Just it's an informal kind of relaxed atmosphere. Um, I won't be having too much. Otherwise, I probably won't be able to follow what Ryan is saying about the kind of deep mystical symbolism of the vine. Um, and so that's the name. You're welcome to bring uh, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, whatever. Uh, but it's just a kind of fun place to kind of dive into some of the meaning uh, of a different subject each month. And the sessions will probably last what, Ryan, about 90 minutes? Yeah, I think we're going to go for about 90 minutes. See, see how long people can actually can actually keep it keep it uh, yeah, sort of on topic for. I know it's 90 minutes is going to be quite a long time, but I think we're going to try and break it up so that there's just going to be a, a kind of a short presentation or topic of some kind, which probably take 10, 15 minutes. And then uh, before then, we'll do a bit of introductions and that sort of thing. And then afterwards, we can just open it up to have a big discussion. Um, and I think we discussed before, but we're not, it's not as much us kind of teaching as much as it is just getting these conversations going. I'm, I'm hoping to learn from some of the people who are on the call as well. So if if you're watching this and you think, you know, you, you've got some things to, uh, some ideas and some insights that you might want to share with us, uh, I think we can all benefit from, uh, from it. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So do you want to kind of give us a, a little bit of a taster of what you've been preparing for this, this first session on the 22nd? Yeah, so uh, there's still some work to do in terms of actually getting it, getting it sort of organised um, and, and sort of putting something together that I can present. But we have got the, a basic theme, so uh, I'll just go into that a tiny bit um, just to give you an idea. So basically what we're focusing on is this idea of uh, the vine. Uh, now, this pattern you probably will have rec will recognised by now, which is our, our logo. Uh, but this pattern also comes from... St. Cuthbert's Gospel, uh, which is what we, where we actually took the took the pattern from. Um, I've tried looking to find out what this pattern means. Obviously, it features prominently on on St. Cuthbert's Gospel, and I actually found it's it's difficult to to find anything about it really. Um, and when I spoke to you, Oliver, you seemed to have this intuition that it was uh, a vine of some kind. And once you said that. I could see it right away that it's obviously some kind of vine. Um, yeah. Can I, can I just say quickly about that? Yeah, so, yeah. so the, the, the gospel was, was found in St. Cuthbert's coffin. 
and it's a Latin uh, gospel of St. John. And so uh, the fourth gospel is kind of, you know, it's, 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 it's separated in time from the other three, um, maybe by a few decades, and it's definitely a lot more mystical. Uh, it's got the famous I am sayings in it. And so it has this this image of a vine within it. So I don't know. I Maybe I read it somewhere. I can't remember exactly, but it does yeah, seem like a vine. It does. It does. And since uh, I've tried looking for the source of it and I, I couldn't find any information about it, it being referred to as a, as a vine uh, in my own sort of searching, but maybe you had heard that from someone or from somewhere. Um, but the more I sort of, the more I started to look at it, uh, obviously you, you definitely have this like central uh, trunk part. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the what the middle part is. Whether it's it seems to have roots at the bottom. Whatever it is, it looks kind of looks like it maybe a tree or or even a, I sometimes think when I look at it maybe a candle of some kind. Uh, but it has these four circles around it, which appear to be in the if you follow the vine analogy, then fruit. Um, and I think you've brought brought up the fact that it clearly relates to the four uh, the four gospels as well. That there's this idea of of there being yeah, these 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 sort of four fruits around this this central central point, um, and so I've been starting to look into the uh, the symbolism, I suppose, of of the vine, um, and obviously it shows up. There's a few times where Christ refers to himself as the vine, and I think it's a really lovely um, and a very powerful sort of image of of this thing that nurtures and produces fruit. The vine itself doesn't produce fruit directly, but it produces fruit through its branches and its shoots, and and they kind of come come out of this central central part that um, that sort of nurtures and feeds the the branches that produce the fruit. And it's it's just a I think it's a really cool image. Uh, so looking at, I've been looking a little bit into how the ancient ancients would have understood this concept of of a vine and fruit and the relationship between them. Um, that have been very familiar with. Uh, grape vines, obviously, uh, being being that wine played quite a crucial role in the in in the the, the lives of of uh, yeah of, of the the people who was around the time of Jesus. So it's it's got this idea, there's this idea wrapped up in it, which is which is obviously obviously to do with uh, nurturing. It's to do with uh, producing fruit. A vine typically binds something together. It tends to grow around a structure as well, so it it doesn't have uh, it doesn't necessarily hold itself up, but it it it, it uses whatever's there uh, and sort of grows around that. And I think that's quite a powerful symbolism for Christianity, especially when you start to look at in the early medieval times how they would the churches would kind of be built uh, on existing spiritual sites of maybe older religions. So it's almost like this vine that that grows on an old structure and and, and produces new fruit. And I, I think that that you can just you can really start to see why the vine is such a powerful image, especially in uh, in the context that it was used in, uh, in, in sort of the, yeah, in the, uh, yeah, around the, around the time of Jesus in the, in the first century. And so uh, there's also a lot to do with the idea of, um, of wine, I think. Jesus obviously is quite, there's this relationship with wine, which is uh, definitely mysterious because it's his first miracle is is kind of focused on on wine and almost his everlasting that like the final miracle that lasts into eternity this this uh using the wine uh as it uh, represented himself and as the world the wine as his blood i think is a very powerful uh, very powerful image and that's obviously a huge connection that that feeds into this image of the fruit and the wine and the vine and so so yeah i think that's basically the the gist of of what we'll be doing. We'll be talking a little bit more in depth about these things, obviously, uh, and we'll have a lot more uh, we'll have more imagery to show you. But ultimately, we're going to focus on the symbolism of the vine. Um, we're going to go into a little more depth on various topics, and then, like I said, if if you if anyone out there who already has ideas about this, something we've maybe not thought about, something that we've not seen, um, something we just don't know about, then feel free to bring it to to input into the conversation because i'm hoping it's going to be more of an open conversation where we can sort of help each other these things are incredibly difficult to actually talk about um and and there's definitely room for people to come in and and, and the, the hope is from my perspective that we're all able to to sort of throw our little thoughts into the into the hat and ultimately end up with a better understanding by the end of it mm. in a kind of, yeah a kind of dialogos kind of 
uh, way of, of, of yeah. having these yeah. meetings. Just a, just a thought, Ryan, while you were talking, like the, the book itself is red as well. Just when you mentioned yeah, the, kind yeah. of image of the Eucharist, the book itself is red. And also, uh, again, it's, it's a gospel of St. John. Um, in John 6, you know, Jesus kind of speaks about the Eucharist in really kind of um, stark terms, you know, unless you um, eat my body and drink my blood, you have no life in you. And so, I don't know, the more we talk about it, the more I just think that intuition is right. And this is a kind of vine symbol. Um, yeah. Also, there's the kind of, it, just in terms of the vine, the kind of pruning, the kind of image of pruning, how it has to be pruned. Um, and that's that's in the sayings of Christ as well in the Gospel of John. Like, I can't help but think that's kind of like the spiritual life. And I, I just, yeah. I, you know, in my mind, I connect all this with Cuthbert, you know, who is a really important saint for us in this country um there's loads of miracles associated with him a kind of very mystical life an ascetic uh who obviously lived um like when he was alone i imagine <laughs> it's pretty hard you know under, under kind of serious hardship out on his island in the north sea and so i can't help but think about that kind of thing of being pruned as well um, yeah. whether it's pruned by the elements pru you know pruned by the people he's meeting he's in a very pagan culture when he's out on his missional um activities spreading the faith uh you know bead kind of writes about how he's in such remote places uh, where no one else would go um yes. to meet yep. people where they are and yeah and i just uh in durham cathedral there's the um there's his altar that he carried around with him just a really humble little wooden altar and again that's got this kind of eucharistic connection so that would have been in his coffin with this um but, you know, more than thinking of these just as kind of historical artifacts, they're kind of shown as historical artifacts and obviously in the museum, but they're also kind of unlocking something that we can kind of rediscover today. Um, yeah, absolutely. It illuminates things for us again. Yeah, and uh, just as you was talking then, there was something else popped in my head that I'd had this thought about, uh, but I'd, 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 I read somewhere about the idea of wild grapes as well, which is, I know this is a bit out there, but the idea that wild grapes being... Uh, grapes that kind of grow almost distant from, they're not cultivated, they just kind of are just growing wild where maybe somehow uh, a seed's been planted and this little vine's grown and grapes are popping off. But the idea that wild grapes produce bad fruit and there's this idea of kind of almost like, like you were saying before about pruning, about it being part of the main vine. You kind of want to be part attached to this main vine. You don't want to be, you don't want to be, eating grapes that are separated from this main vine and there's this idea that um uh, there's also this it goes a lot deeper as well there's also this idea about soil and about about this good soil to be like a, a if if a if a, a vine's planted in, a grapevine planted in really rich soil then it will have a strong vine and it'll have this like yeah produce great fruit and mm. i think there's this there's so much of that it really is very close to the to the the symbolism of the tree as well which obviously is yeah. is quite um is quite a prominent in christianity uh, but one of the main things about the where the vine differs from the tree is is I was, because obviously i was thinking about this what is the difference between the tree why did jesus not just say that he's a tree like why why, why the vine because obviously this there's, there's a difference there somewhere uh that that he's trying to highlight that i don't i can't quite figure out what that is but i think it's probably to do with the fact that as i was saying before about the divine not it doesn't support itself it's almost like it's almost like it, it has to use the existing structure that's already there to kind of weave its way around and it it like i said it binds together whereas a tree doesn't necessarily bind tree branches um but yeah i just thought it was a just was an interesting there's lots of there's lots of elements to this so we could go in a number of directions and i'm hoping that um that people will be able to bring their own ideas into it as well and we might end up somewhere that we don't, didn't expect but but i suppose that's the point of uh of getting together really yeah exactly yeah you know we said in in the discussion didn't we that we had the, the recorded discussion about like we're not experts here we're just mm. wanting to facilitate something and have a conversation and we feel like it's really important uh that we do this now seems like the moment um and these conversations don't seem to be happening really in this country at least anywhere else um not that i'm aware of anyway and so um if this sounds like something you'd be interested in um hopefully something you'd benefit from i know i can't wait um to get involved in this then uh head over to the website subscribe for free and join us join us for mead and meaning 
So. Yeah, that, that, that's the pitch. <laughs> that's the pitch. So if there's anything else, Ryan, we'll, we'll leave it there. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I just hope uh, I'd encourage people just to come along. Uh, it's it's going to be new for all of us, so there's going to be no one there who, who's any more, who's got any more sort of experience uh, attending this meeting than anyone else. So uh, I just encourage everyone to come along, despite maybe push through the the apprehension if everyone anyone's a little bit nervous about uh, being on camera and and join us because uh, we're going to be in the same boat. Yeah, and it's and it, just to add as well, it's not going to be if you are a bit nervous about all that kind of stuff, it's not going to be recorded. Um, so that means if you want to be involved, yep. you've got to come along. It's not, we're not going to be recording this. It's not going to be put on YouTube. Uh, you've got to be there. So see you then.